The world of ice and fire makes a unique impression the moment it enters your hands. The cover looks amazing, with the intricately designed embossed Targaryen sigil. And while making your book look like a leather-bound tome is nothing new, the moment you touch it you realize they took the immersion a step further. The cover is soft and slightly puffy, I guess is the word, mimicking the feel of leather in your hands. The immersion does not stop there, though. It has pieces of handwritten text and even some faint text that has been erased, and each page has this aged, oxidized look. Now if it only came with the old book smell, this would be a home run. Just as a side note, this book is very tall, so if you were planning on putting this into a smaller bookcase, it might not fit. Just something to think about. The feel complements the story perfectly. Yes, there is a story behind this book. This is a culmination of the Citadel's knowledge, pieced together by Maester Yandel. A lot of people have described this as a Song of Ice and Fire's Silmarillion. I think that can be a bit misleading. While the Silmarillion is an omniscient text, all-knowing from the beginning of time to the modern-day Middle-earth, a world of ice and fire is more human. It doesn't have all the answers. A world of ice and fire does not open to the beginning of time or the beginning of the world. The story begins at the Dawn Age, when children of the forest, uncivilized man, and mythical creatures like giants and ice spiders roam the world. Yandel continues to tell the history, as it is known by the Maesters, up to Robert Baratheon's reign. Yandel doesn't shy away from admitting that he doesn't know why something is, or where it came from. For example, he admits that where dragons originated is still a mystery, but does give multiple theories from different cultures on the origins of the dragons. And different cultures, people, and houses is where a world of ice and fire really shines. You get the myths and history of Westeros along with all of its houses, from Sunspear to Winterfell. I personally found the origins of House Greyjoy particularly interesting. Of course, you can't talk about the Great Houses without talking about the Targaryens. They are the foundation of what modern-day Westeros is. But if you were looking solely for a Targaryen history, I have to recommend Fire and Blood or The Rise of the Dragon over the World of Ice and Fire. That's going to cover the history of the Targaryens in far greater detail. You can check out our full review on The Rise of the Dragon from the link in the description after you're done watching this. But what this book does have is a wealth of knowledge on lands outside of Westeros, from the lands of Essos to the Summer Isles, or travel even further east, beyond the Bones to Yi Ti or Shy by the Shadow. Lands that have been teased, but never spoken of in detail, and details we are given along with some of the most beautiful illustrations, from maps, portraits, mystical landscapes, castles, and house sigils, which can be almost as complicated to remember as the house lineage. But now, you don't have to spend the majority of your adult life learning all these because they're all presented in a fashion that can be easily referenced. Bottom line is, this is one of the most well put together books I have purchased in a long time. And no, you won't get all the answers to every question you have. What caused the doom of Valyria may forever remain a mystery. But the time and attention to detail to create such an immersive book makes up for all of that.